cool. I thought it was 45 bucks. I 60. Said, I said 80 and I want 12. I want 12. I want 3. But anyway, <laughs> I have my question. What? Yo! What? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Sweet. So, welcome back. Another six wines on the Wine for the People Blind Tasting Show. This week, as always, sometimes always hooking us up with six very interesting drops. If you want to get your mouths around these, which is such a normal thing to say about wine, head down to the Discord chat. In the link below, there's this, uh, a little subscription code in there. Well, not subscription, it's a discount code. You get 10% off all the wines that we taste on this week's show. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. That'd be nice. And big shout out to the Indonesian pages that keep stealing our videos and putting them up there. Like, good on you guys. It's getting us extra views, apparently. I don't know who's watching them. Anyway. Uh, numero uno, we have a lovely, uh, delicate, you know, quite refined white wine. Um, a little bit of green highlights, which is kind of interesting. Soft and subtle, but we'll see how we go. Number one, nice kind of golden tinge here. Little highlights, which is great. That is citrusy. Uh, instantly, I'm thinking Riesling off the nose, uh, just because it's got this sort of, uh, it doesn't have the oak of Chardonnay, and therefore, if it's not oak, if it's not Chardonnay, it's probably Riesling. Tastes like cardboard. I always say this tastes like cardboard, but not in a bad way. Jeez, pretty. Pretty but muted. Fuck. Something's really familiar about this wine. This is pretty impressive. It's actually pretty ripe, but not like aromatically or heady or anything like that. Pretty low acid. Uh, I'm not picking up too much oak integration here. Uh, it feels just like a really simple, clean white wine. It's got this sort of cool little nutty finish to it, which is what's making me think Chardonnay as opposed to Riesling. You know what? I don't know why I'm fighting it. I, I'm really enjoying it. I, I want to keep drinking that. I'm going to say 12. I'm really about it. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Absolutely pristine. Uh, I'm going to chuck 50 bucks down and I'm going to buy nine. My nine bottles. I don't want to get so anti straight out the gate. Uh, number two, another white wine of similar kind of golden opulence, but a little bit fuller than the first one. Fresh, like rambutan, lychee kind of thing. Henry Hammersley once taught me that when you're smelling things, you should smell them with your mouth open because then you can taste it a little bit, but it can't help you just looking a little bit like a dingus, like. Works though. Um, um, this has that sort of grape soda flavoring, but that's actually from uh, Musket of Alexandria, uh, the mother of all the aromatic category of white wines. Lovely texture, love kind of slippery, oily texture. Acidity's bright and high. Super easy drinking, not doing a lot for me in terms of, like, I'm struggling to pick any one thing out. It's just sort of like general description white wine. It kind of tastes like the white wine that Ikea would serve next to their $1 hot dogs. So pretty, so delicate. I really do think it's a you know, really great Gewurz Tremina. Gewurz or Gewurz blend, the acidity is kind of moderate. The tannin and structure is quite prominent. Not grippy or anything like that, but it's just that little bit more astringent than you would expect from, say, something like Riesling. Oh, yeah, I, I could just chew on that texture and that acid for days. That's a great wine. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, it's going to be the, I'm going to go $45. I reckon it might be Fiano, probably maybe from the New World, or could be could be Chenin Blanc or something like that, some kind of textural white. There is a long life here in this wine because it is outstanding, and I just can't wait to see what it would do in the cellar. Good stuff. Uh, wine number three. It's got bubbles in it, but I've been down this path before with you, Lockie, where I say something's carbonated and then it's not, but that undeniably has bubbles in it. I'm gonna say it, it's probably Pinot Gris. It's this global trend for Pinot Gris rosés right now, Ramato styles. It does kind of look like that, to be fair. No, nah, it doesn't smell like that. It smells like a Sanye or a Salasso, which is a bleeding off of juice. The reason why, it actually has all the heady aromatics of a, um, a confected, fully ripe red wine, so this has probably been used as a byproduct. Doesn't sound sparkling though. What's going on? Can't get any fizz out of it. And now the bubbles are going away. Yeah, no, it's not carbonated. God damn. Honeycomb, like fresh, like really good honeycomb. Nice, yeah, strawberry thing. Yeah, a bit of raspberry. It smells sweet. Uh, I mean, it's a meme, but like, I don't think this is rosé because it doesn't taste very, uh, no, but it probably is. It's not skins if you agree. Is it rosé? This is the whole game. We play it every week on the show. Um, That's great, you know. It is what it is. Summertime drinking, nice and easy by the beach. Uh, chill it down, even let it bring it up to room temperature. It's gonna be enjoyable. If I close my eyes and put it in like a black glass and couldn't see the color, I'd almost actually go as far as to say it's a really nice confected light red. But I think the alcohol is a bit high and it'll probably, it'll probably surprise you. On a, on a Sunday afternoon picnic after you had two or three glasses of rosé, it's like, oh boy, what's happened here? I think that's kind of one of, it's gonna be a rosé that sneaks up in here. 
Oh, do we know, Lockie? It looks like you can, we're getting so good at this. I can look at this and be like, mm, it's Riesling. Banana y thing that I see in a lot of Australian uh, Chardonnays, particularly from the Adelaide Hills. This could be Yarra Valley as well. I, I see a lot of Yarra Valleys using this quite intense level of uh, full leaves contacts whilst in the barrel. So you get that really opulent, ripe, and rich style. But this feels like kind of ta like really tailored. There's a lot, it feels like there's going to be a lot of acidity here, or at least a, a good moderate level. Uh, I think this is, some, someone has put some time, care, and effort into this wine. It smells stunning. Yeah, okay, so like nutty, textural, somethingy white wine, probably Italian or something like that. <sighs> Damn, wow, come out swinging, man. That's cool. It's really gorgeous. It is really gorgeous. It's a great like phenolic grip as well. I wouldn't say it takes me to the, the absolute top echelon of phenomenal Chardonnay, but it's really bloody close. Uh, look, it feels Burgundian-esque. It is finely crafted. The right, there's not a lot of ripeness there, so I wouldn't, maybe, maybe even going further into like Chablis, maybe even Cru Chablis, Premier Cru Chablis. Could be New Zealand, New Zealand Chardonnay. You know, we're talking cool climate, slightly reductive, really well handled, ele elegant oak. Just really, um, oh, this is so good. This is amazing. Uh, I think I'm gonna drop 80 bucks a bottle. I'm gonna buy 12. I'm five, bit golder. Probably looking at some skin contact here, I think. Yum. All right. So this kind of smells like vanillary. To be honest, struggle to identify the variety. I kind of think it's Sauvignon Blanc, Fumé Blanc style. I think it's really, really well made. I think it's really delicious. In fact, I would buy like at least six bottles of this and I would spend about 40 bucks a bottle for it. I think it's, I think it's really, really well made. Cool one. Good, good acid, good structure, good complexity. It's good, it's good, good one. I'm gonna say this word one again, Bistro Blanc, but it's a Bistro, Bistro Orange Light. Six bottles, natty. And I'm thinking, might be like a Pinot Gris sort of thing, maybe, I don't know. It looks like it's un, uh, fine and unfiltered as well. Remarkable sort of class act here. I'm um, I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, I'm actually gonna go like six to nine bottles. I'm, um, I'm a big fan of that. Grill and some chicken wings on the barbecue kind of wine. That's what I, I feel with this one. I'm gonna go $42. And yeah, I like it. Good little uh, French orange little number, I think. That's my gut instinct here. Uh, all right, last wine in the lineup. We've got another golden hue thing. It's almost like we've merged the last two wines together into one wine. We've kind of gone golden hue, but also brilliant crystal clear clarity. Yeah, some like dried thyme or oregano in here. It's like a, someone's opened up the master food spice rack here. It tastes like a spice rack and that's really cool. Another two bottles again, because this is this is a fun food friendly wine that's really intriguing, but I have absolutely no idea what this is. Damn. Burnside public pool, summer day, outdoors. You've just got like, you're playing Marco Polo and you're doing that cheat thing where you keep your mouth under the water so you can't say polo, but your nose and ears are above so you can still see what's going on. That's the smell of this wine, when your nose is that level on the water. That might be the most accurate thing I've ever said about the smell of a wine on this show, and those guys aren't gonna agree with me, fuck. All right. Lifted, we're talking that Zabibo, Gewurz, aromatic white category is sitting in here, definitely somewhere. I potentially is a blend, could be a bargain, but I think it's really quite fascinating. Really interested in that. And uh, I'm interested to see what the guys think of that because I think there might be some interesting discussions to have about this. Maybe there's faults in it that I'm not really aware of, but I think it's a quite delicious wine. Wine number one is pretty clearly the wine of the lineup for me. Public pool's pretty cheap. I'm going to say that's a $28 bottle of wine. Can't wait to be proven wrong. Anyway, um, yeah, that's six wines. See what the boys think. Alrighty, you good? I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What a turnaround. <laughs> yeah. Interesting lineup. What'd you guys think of it? Loved it. Ups and downs for me. I had some, I didn't hate any wine. I, I liked all of them, but there was varying degrees of likeness. And there was a few things that I was like, that's not the style of that wine for me. Well, let's hop into it. Wine number yeah. one. Um, I didn't think I was going to like it when I first smelled it and tasted it. And then I put it down and wanted to drink more of it. And I'm like, oh, that kind of means that I like it, doesn't what? it? If I want to drink more of it. Well, yeah. Well, for me, that's probably a really good point. But for me, I was doing the same thing. I was like drinking a lot more of it as well. But I was trying to figure out what the hell it was because it was really really neutral yeah. and i yeah. couldn't really pick anything up i was like it's okay uh 45 bucks 50 28 how much was it oh 41. right yeah. around the mark interesting, interesting. Yeah. i wonder what it'll be 41 that's the new basket range price you'll be surprised that i called it sharp man blonk 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 <laughs> 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 so it's why it's that's, no, that's it. spanish no nah, it's been to france by the looks grenache blanc <laughs> fuck off with the grenache blancs
What are you talking about? What do you mean? This isn't red wine. Stop it. Just call it something else. Like, why do you have to make this harder for people like it's me? It's even better. There's also Grenache Gris. Fuck off! Oh. <laughs> Blended and, into it. And Terret Gris. Terret Gris. Never, oh never heard of that right before. Uh, Languedoc Roussillon, so we're talking about the, the southern uh, part of France, famous for, let's say, you know, very good value wines. It's probably a diplomatic way yeah. of saying it. And But we're constantly impressed with the, the value of wines from the Languedoc. Uh, they're getting better and better and better every year. Next, next up, we've got uh, another cheeky little one. I, I thought it was slapped. I thought it was great. Yeah, I really liked this it. Is, this is cool. This is cool. I reckon uh, I reckon a Gewurz Tramina. I was thinking Fiano. I called it Elegante. Actually, yeah. If you, if you pull it, if you, if you, I just want to see what you say. Right, if, you, if you jump the shark on this, I'll be remarkably you, you, impressed. I've um, never seen Elegante so um, so aromatic, and like textural. This. Yeah. Good honey. I had uh, six for thirty, uh, which is how much I like. To pay I had for twelve for forty-five. Too. I thought it was great. 12, 12 25. 25? Yeah, yeah, bang. Nice. How much was it? Bargain. That's a bargain. That's really good. 25 bargain. is a bargain. Compira Maru. Cool. Nice. That's awesome. That is the least Compira Maru wine I have ever tried. Yeah, I know. It's uh, Riesling Vermentino. Riesling plus Vermentino equals Fiano is what I'll have to say. <laughs> that. Is, uh, yeah. That's all you want to say. Uh, that is amazing. Yeah, this is great wine, especially for $25. 25 bucks, that is yeah. excellent value. Um, like, I. These guys are really, I think we've had their wines a couple of times on the show, and I've had them a lot recently. Like, when they first came out, there was a bit, bit of turbidity, a bit of kind of wackiness going on. But, bit of they're, funk. but they're going, like, up That's and up and up class. and up. class. Yeah, really, really good that stuff. That is all class. And these guys, obviously, hands off, lo-fi, all the above. Like, yeah. pretty um, pretty gnarly yes. stuff. So. Uh, now, for the spin Skinzy Pinot Gris of the round, uh, what did we think of wine number three? <laughs> uh, I uh, wasn't particularly into it. Nah, neither. Oh, really? I bought 12. Oh, good on you. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I didn't hate it by any means. I, I actually didn't think it was a Skinzy Pinot Gris. I thought this was a rosé. Yeah. But mm. I thought it was leaning a little bit... It was a little bit heavier than the rosés mm. that I want to drink. It's a little that's bit soupy or something. That's exactly what I thought, And too. that's that Sanye effect. <laughs> uh, how much was it, look? Oh, yeah, yeah 28. Yeah, there there we go. In the there we go. Yeah, there we go. What do we got? Crudo. Yeah, Nebbiolo, cool. uh, Sangiovese, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Shiraz. Oh, is it? Is, yeah. it? is it the... Uh, crudo rosé from Syrah. Yeah. Syrah. Yeah, cool. Cool. Uh, Thirteen and a half percent alcohol, so a little bit higher up there. Probably on the Sanye thing to make his uh, Shiraz just a that bit denser, really bit better. But Wissy makes some of the best uh, Syrah from the era uh, for sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, Luke Lambert, we've had his ones in the show. They slap. Uh, they're really, really good, and they're great value too. Um, the Chardonnay and the Shiraz in the Crudo range are stonking yeah. buys. Yeah, amazing. Very happy with uh, that. Uh, great producer. Uh, hey, if you like, you good like a bit of a riper Sanya style rosé. You'll probably enjoy this as much as Brendan did. Uh, number four. Moving right along. Yeah, uh, something textural and Italian. I thought. I don't really know what I thought about this. What? One, to be honest with you. Textural and Italian. I knew this what? was gonna be wrong. <laughs> what fucking planet are you on? Jeez. Uh, oh, uh, ab absolute wine lineup. Top, Sir, top. we will share this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, top. top to your Chardonnay. Like, I still don't like it, but um, yeah, it's definitely Chardonnay, you're right. It oh, is like high, yeah. highbrow stuff. Cool, I thought it was 45 bucks. I said, 60. I said 80 and I want 12. I want 12. I want three. But anyway, <laughs> I have my question. What? Yo! What? One, one, one. What? Shardy. Yarra Shardy. Valley. Shardy. Yeah, I did. I, I mentioned Yarra in the tasting. We said it has that opulent thing that of full solids Yarra Shardy that happens a lot. Dude! Damn. The best Adelaide Hill Chardonnay ever made. It's probably the, the greatest Valley. thing to come from 2020. Holy shit. I think I'm going to have an uphill battle arguing for wine number one being one of the lineup against yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For 25 bucks, that's pretty impressive. You can't 25. buy a $25 Chardonnay at this quality anymore. It just doesn't happen. So that's crazy. Moving yeah. right along to uh, some sort of natty something or other, yeah. I thought. Yeah, oh, cool. Uh, I had uh, six to nine bottles of it. Um, I thought this was some potentially Fume Blanqui. Yeah, I, I had savvy vibes as well. No, I think it was this one. I was saying that this is kind of like the white wine that I would expect Ikea to serve with their $1 hot dogs. Like, it's just so, like, middle of the road. Like, I like $1 hot dogs. Sorry, that's if a compliment. Ikea got into awesome. Natty Wine. Yeah, this is the Natty that's Wine they would make. How much was it? Ooh. Magic number. Um, <laughs> so, but <laughs> Swedish meatballs yeah. for two. Swedish meatballs. Oh, Dude, awesome. Sicily. Catarato. Catarato. Wow. wow. That's cool. Probably one of the most interesting Catarato's that I've seen, to be honest, as well, because typically... I'm not really impressed with Catarato as a variety. It's kind of a little bit muted. No one's really explored hmm. it uh, in, in a fun way before. This little, is a little bit of skin fun. contact takes it a long way. 
Yeah, that's really cool, actually. I love the the, the label. Oh, as these well. uh, Alessandro made. Viola makes some great cool. wines. All right, finishing it up with wine number six. Now, I had the tasting note of all tasting notes with the smell of this one. All right. So this smells like public pool outdoor chlorine, except it's when your nose is like right here, like right oh, down yeah, at the yeah, water yeah, level, right, and yeah, it's yeah. like right there. You don't agree with that at all. I thought, I thought that, that was the last one. I on. thought that was the the last one. Uh, I wanted three bottles at 70 bucks. I wanted six at 28. I wanted 12 at 65. Right. I was yeah. happy to spend on this. Big fan. Hey, cheap one up. Great value. That's probably odds mm. at that. Quealy. Quealy. Wow. Uh, Friano. Friano's Giallo uh, Riesling and Malvasia. Yeah, all right. Um, there we go. Yeah, great. Uh, so Quealy have kind of made a name for themselves for making some really cool Italian-ish takes on stuff like Friano and... Uh, Pinot Gris as well, uh, and make some really cool, interesting wines from the morning from the Lynch But this is, I think, this is the best wine I've had from them. Uh, I'd at absolutely all. agree. I've I've been sort of hit and miss with with Quilly for a while. I've always loved them for what they do, as opposed to the wines they produce. If yeah. that makes any sense, like I love them for their vision. Yeah. Um, and Friolano, I has never really ticked like a lot of boxes for me personally, unless you make it like Radicon or something like that. That. That, holy shit. I haven't said I was like Slovenia, Northern Italy, gives me those vibes. Amazing wine. Mm. What an amazing wine. Cracking, cracking wine, actually. Um, that is really, really cool. But clear standout for you guys has to be that $25 oh, Chardonnay. Yeah. Oh, you can't you can't get Chardonnays at that quality at that at that price anymore. Like yeah. unless yeah, it's that and uh, the crudo Chardonnay we've had previously. Like you can't get that price to, at that quality. It's crazy. And Yara's really good for it too. Yara's amazing for it. I, I'm already thinking of uh, assembling like an all-star great value white wine pack. You know, between the was it Franz? When I say Franz Ferdinand, but it was yeah, no Franz. <laughs> um, Franz German Riesling. Yeah, that German That was Riesling just like twenty thing. bucks. That was, yeah, nuts. It was bonkers. And then this. Here as well, but it has to be in it. Yeah, yeah. sub sub thirty dollar bangers of just whites. I think that'll that'll be a set too. They're, yeah, they're all cool, cool Amazing lineup. Quality. I, I was I came in here going like, oh, that was alright, but now I'm like excited. Yeah, cool. Oh well, glad that you changed your mind. Until next week though, uh, we'll be here. Like and subscribe, please. Please do. <laughs> please do. It helps.